Hello and welcome back to the Love Machine podcast. Now today I'd like to welcome you all to a very special friend of mine, Claudia Cox. Now Claudia is the founder of Text Weapon, which is the ultimate online resource for teaching you the secrets of both romantic and flirty texting. She is here to help you all up your flirting game and I am so excited to have her here with me today. So Claudia, welcome. Hi James, it's great to be here. I'm excited to, you know, talk all about texting secrets that can help people find love one text at a time. Brilliant. Now, I've known you quite a few years now, and we've kept in touch, and we've often talked to each other, and we've interacted, and I know that you are the go-to expert when it comes to texting. So can you tell me a bit about yourself, your background, and how you got into all this? Well, uh, yeah, that's true. I've always loved texting. And when I got my first Nokia back in 2000, I actually kept a record of every text I received, which sounds absolutely crazy, especially today with how many messages are going back and forth. But at the time, text messages were still expensive. I think I was, you know, paying about 20 cents a message. So it wasn't that that many. But in any case, um, I kept all of these in my little treasure chest. And in 2010, after the end of a long-term relationship, I found myself back on the dating market. And all of a sudden, I realized that it had totally changed. Everything was about texting. So I went back, I looked at my text messages, and I tried to figure out really what's the secret to attracting someone and to keeping someone attracted with text messages. And I started my blog, Text Weapon, in 2012. Wow, 2012 already. And uh, I started teaching people all the secrets that I had learned. And here I am, uh, eight years later, still spreading the love. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are. You're very prolific when it comes to promoting your business and also promoting other people, which we're all very, very grateful for. So <laughs> with what exactly is Text Weapon for those that don't know? It's, it's a resource for singles and couples uh, to come up with creative texting ideas and also learn about what works and what doesn't work, you know, so they don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. People make a lot of mistakes when it comes to texting. And as a dating coach, I see that every day. And people often send me their entire conversations and ask me what they should say next. And it's a bit of a struggle for some people because unlike a real conversation, you do get the chance to think about your answer and to be creative. Do you think people struggle with that a lot in terms of texting? Or do you think people will find it easier nowadays? I think people, they, they still struggle with that. I mean, there's uh, two sides of the camp. People who are overthinking their text messages and people who they aren't thinking about them at all. They're just kind of randomly, you know, firing up, firing off text messages, you know, without any goals, without any personality. So, yeah, I think uh, it's still an issue. I would agree with you. People definitely do struggle with it. And it is an important part of keeping things going when it comes to dating. Because everyone's got a phone in their hands nowadays. It's the way we interact. And people don't always speak so much. They do tend to interact by texting. And this involves maybe WhatsApp as well or other resources like that. So what mistakes do you think people make when it comes to texting? Well, I think one of the first mistakes that people make is they don't show enough enthusiasm you know, there's so much uh, discussion about being hard to get or playing games or waiting a certain amount of time, you know, that people, they forget to really to show the other person that they're excited about the possibility of the relationship, you know, to show their positive side, um, to really try to get some feelings across. I agree with you. I think people just feel the need they have to text and they do it for the sake of it. And that can go extreme as well. I think some people get too sexual and too flirty much too quickly. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I totally agree with you. So I don't think there's anything wrong with sexual messages if you're in a long-term relationship. You know, it can add a little spice and uh, it adds some fun. But in the beginning, it tends to cheapen the relationship and you miss out on all the fun stuff, you know, building up the sexual tension slowly. 
And I think another thing is you also risk turning your partner off because you have no idea, you know, what they find uh, sexy or what their taboos are. So um, in the beginning, I think, you know, stay away from overly sexual compliments, um, you know, sexual role playing or talking explicitly about fantasies and uh, just kind of keep it flirty instead of, uh, you know, saying, uh, I wish, you know, you were here so we could do blah, 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 very explicit. You know, you could write something, wish you were here right now, dot, dot, dot. Or, you know, from instead of saying, um, I could tell by the way you dance that you would be good at, uh, <laughs> you know, you could say, still thinking about that hug last night, you smelled great. You, you know, just take it down a notch in the beginning. Definitely. I think it's like a, a present at Christmas. It should be unwrapped very, very slowly. And the longer you take to unwrap this present, the more likely you are to be excited about it when you finally do get it. So take your time when it comes to that sort of thing. One of my favourite texts that I send to people, well, I personally send to people, I tell my, my clients to send to people. My wife wouldn't really approve if I send this to people, but the message is stop thinking about me and then put a wink on the end of it. Oh, that's, that's great. That's one of my favourite texts. <laughs> do you like that? <laughs> I love that. And I think you can play around with that. You know, you can say uh, something about, you know, in the in the morning, you can say, uh, did you sleep okay last night, dreaming about me, you know, with a little winky. And you just play around with that kind of stuff. It's, it's fun, it's flirty, and uh, it's not going to get you into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice. The last thing anyone wants is to upset anybody, <laughs> particularly me and my <laughs> wife. So... <laughs> So I understand that as part of Text Weapon, you have three key principles as part of your course. Can you share what they are? Yeah, the, the first principle is to personalize, personalize, personalize. Because I think every text message is an opportunity, you know, to show your, your, your unique personality. So, for example, this is a real easy one, uh, the classic, how are you? You know, instead of just writing something simple and boring, you could say, hey, handsome, how are you doing? You keeping out of trouble? I mean, that's kind of showing that you have a little sense of humor and you don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, the second is pretty much uh, straightforward, and that is to remember that there's an actual person on the other side of the screen, which it's uh, it's it's easy to forget that, you know, you're looking at your cell phone, you're kind of in your own thing, you just start firing off, you know, left and right, but there's a real person there. So, um, and the third is uh, probably the most important, and that is texting is fun, you know, and if it's not fun, then maybe you're texting with the wrong person. So I think everything that I teach is based off of those three principles. They are good principles. I think you also mentioned about personalizing. I think putting someone's name in the text sometimes is good too. Because when you are very familiar with somebody, you might not put their name in as much. But it is the most beautiful sound in their language is their own name. So if you can put it in sometimes, they're going to feel a much deeper connection. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. I think, you know, the simple act of just adding someone's name turns um, you know, a very generic message into something that's going to make them smile. You know, and you can even take that further. I mean, I wrote a whole chapter in my book about names, coming up with uh, cute names. It doesn't have to be, you know, really cheesy like baby cakes or, you know, but something that's uh, very specific to them. You know, if they are into baking, then you could say, hey, good morning, my little sexy baker, or something like that. You know, it just creates this rapport. That's fantastic. Great advice. I completely agree. Your job is to make it fun and to create rapport. So if you can have little nicknames or pet names, then it is more personalised and it, it's going to resonate. It's like a little secret you've got between the two of you. And that's something I advise people when it comes to dating. Create little secrets, little shared stories that only you two know, and that can increase your intimacy and of course your rapport. What sort of person would come to you when it comes to text weapon? Um, well, I work with a lot of uh, singles, 
Uh, people who've been out of the dating game for a while or people they just kind of uh, see themselves in a, um, a cycle where they're dating the same type of person or, you know, they're getting the same type of responses. So trying to break the cycle. And then also uh, couples in long distance or long term relationships, you know, in a long distance couple, sometimes it's hard to really keep the connection strong. So just kind of coming up with creative ideas so it doesn't turn into good morning, have a nice day, good night, sleep tight kind of thing. <laughs> That's the kiss of death to any relationship. If, if you're doing the same thing and saying the same things over and over and over, the repetition is going to kill it. So you have to keep things fresh. I completely agree with you when it comes to that. Yeah, and I think even with texting, I mean, making sure that you're mixing it up, you're sending good morning, good night, random texts, texts in the day. You know, you can send links to things that your partner might find interesting, photos, um, you know, tell them also that, uh, especially in the beginning, uh, that you want to hear their voice, say something, you know, craving the sound of your voice, give me a call, or, you know, schedule in some FaceTime chats. I think you're right. It's, it's really keeping things uh, a little bit out of the routine. It really is. I think if you mix things up a little bit, then you don't get stuck in the same set boring routine. In fact, I've got at the end of our podcast here, I've put together six of my top tips, which we're going to go over. And you've mentioned one or two of them already, which is great. It just proves that they're good advice. <laughs> so I will mention them myself. I get your thoughts. <laughs> I got four to more to go. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be some more at the end of this. I like to give my, re my listeners a little listen to some of my quick tips just to get some quick advice towards the end. Okay, uh, so the first message that you want to send somebody that you meet on, on Tinder or you meet online is something to kind of pique their interest, something that shows that you took the time to look at their profile or, you know, just showing genuine interest in the person and not making it a self-promotion exercise, you know, trying to convince them that you're amazing, but um, showing them for whatever reason it is that you find them interesting. Great. Well, yes, I think making them remember who you are and that you're people like people who are interested in them. So if you can show that you're interested, they're going to want to spend time getting to know you over the whole process. And that brings me on to my next question. Do you like how I just slid into that one? I <laughs> love that. That's it's smooth. 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 It's... Like, like my texting. <laughs> smooth operator. <laughs> I try. <laughs> So tell me, sometimes people have been texting for a while and they've decided that they don't want to take the conversation any further. And of course, sometimes people have been dating for a short time and they also decide the time has come to make a decision. They don't want to see that person again. So in those situations, how would you advise that they text them? Um, I think that they should do the right thing and let them know as soon as they as they've made their decision that they don't want to go any further with the relationship you know instead of stringing the other person along for you know a couple extra weeks then just uh, send them a message tell them something that you appreciate about them which uh it's probably it's true if you've been dating them for a couple weeks you find something interesting about them and then just let them know i'm sorry I think that, you know, you're, you're a great conversationalist and you're a really fun person to hang out with, but I don't feel a connection. Um, I, I don't think that we should see each other anymore. I don't think that we should, you know, I'm not, I don't want to take this any further. Honesty is always the best policy. There's no point stringing somebody along. And if somebody decides they won't take no for an answer and they keep messaging you and keep texting you for explanations, I would advise them just to block them in that situation. You don't need to explain yourself in great detail unless you've been dating for quite some time. And then I don't think that texting somebody a breakup text is the best situation anyway. You should always meet them face to face if you can, or at the very least have a telephone call. Now I can remember in terms of positive text, one of the best texts I ever had sent to me was after the first date with my wife. I asked her to text me to say she got home safely. She texted me to say she had a lovely time. It was great to meet me. My charm must have worked and she wanted to see me again. And I thought that was very bold and that was a great text. And I knew that she was keen. It was slightly flirty. And I thought this is great. This is the sort of person that I want to meet again. What is the best text 
that you've ever sent somebody or that someone sent you? Oh, that's a great question. Putting you on the spot there. Of course. Um, I think that one of the best texts that I ever received was, um, it was sort of, it was very visual. And this was a long, long time ago. And it was simple, but uh, it always stuck in my mind. And that was uh, sleep tight and promise that you'll dream of me too. <laughs> That's great. That, I think good night texts like that are absolutely perfect because then you can't help but think about them when you go to sleep. And chances are you will dream about them as well. So. Yeah, that was sent probably eight years ago and I still remember that text. So that one is definitely a good one. Write that down, people. <laughs> that is definitely a good one to send if you know them well enough. Don't send a complete stranger that message because you might freak them out. Don't yeah. do that. Always remember your boundaries. <laughs> boundaries are so important yeah. when it comes to text. Don't send someone a message that you don't know very well until you've really sussed them out and you think they can handle your sense of humour or your banter. Because getting banter wrong can backfire, as we discovered earlier, when it comes to overly flirty messages. Where do you think people should draw the line when it comes to text messages? Um, when it comes to being uh, overly sexual or just uh, in as far as how many text messages they should send or? I, I mean, as in the sense of how many texts you should send, because I think they should be used sparingly. And some people, some of my clients say to me that they're getting on so well right now, they're texting every single day, they're speaking every night and it's constant and that can get a bit tiresome. And they say to me, I'm a bit bored of this now. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that um, you have to be careful about oversharing uh, with text messages or, you know, just what is the added value of sending somebody that you're just starting to date a message saying, I just ate a hamburger. I am so full, <laughs> you know, there's, you're, you're not creating any attraction with that. They're not really getting to know you. I mean, uh, this kind of message, maybe you can send your best friend or your mom, but you don't need to overshare every, you know, give them constant updates on everything you're doing during your day or share too much information. You know, I just went to the, to the salon and kind of keep that to yourself. And uh, I think also it's important to know um, when to leave a conversation and, and a lot of people, they are excited. They're having a fun time chatting with somebody on WhatsApp, on Viber, on, you know, Facebook Messenger. And um, they just kind of like pump the conversation until it's completely dry. It's completely boring. So what I suggest is that people leave the conversation at a high, you know, when it's, uh, it's fun, you're both having a great time, uh, then maybe send one more message and then pop out leave them wanting more yes that's uh, that's the key is to leave them wanting more you know when you overshare um there's nothing left to want because they they know everything <laughs> so you don't want that you want some mystery and then to get to know you slowly now often when you're texting somebody and you have good banter and things are going really really well You've got the dilemma, who texts the last text? Because if they ask you a question or say goodnight to you, it's tempting to be the last person to reply. So what are your thoughts on that? Who should be the last person to reply to the other? I think that you should text somebody when you feel like it. <laughs> I've, you know, by now everybody is so used to all of these dating games. You're waiting a couple of days or waiting a couple hours to seem busy. I think you should text when you're you're feeling happy, when you're feeling excited, when you have something worthwhile to share. Uh, I don't think you should really try and play, oh, um, I'm not gonna answer now or I'm gonna leave them guessing. I think you can in, you create intrigue in, in other ways. Um, on the same note, I don't think you should you know, you send five text messages in a row without a reply. Here are my six top texting tips that I've got for all my listeners here. These are my quick tips I've put together to give you a brief summary of my own dating advice when it comes to the art of texting. 
And I'm going to read these out to you. And then, Claudia, I'd like your opinion on them afterwards. And anything you can add would be highly valuable. So my first text, first text. So my first tip for you is that texting is not a meeting or a talking replacement. Don't just text somebody your first initial conversation. Use the telephone if you can to speak to them, get to know them. Don't rely on just arranging your first date by text. It's not very romantic. And my second tip for you is to save the texting for between the dates. Once you have spoken to them, it's a really good thing to keep momentum going by texting light flirty messages as you go. But it's not a replacement for actually meeting up with them or talking on the telephone at all. Number three, my advice to you is to try and use emojis every now and again. One of the best ways you can convey what you're really, really thinking is by putting a little smiley face or a wink. I know Claudia mentioned putting winks on sometimes and they're highly effective if you use them sparingly. If you're not the sort of person that likes to use emojis, then just do it anyway. It just makes you look like a happier, friendlier person. Don't overdo them. No one wants to see 10 different emojis and little cucumbers and things at the end of the messages. It doesn't work that way. That's annoying. Save that for Instagram. And my, third, my next tip for you is to text last thing at night. And we covered this already beautifully by Claudia's message about try not to dream about me or try to dream about me. If you can send that message, then they will think about you. And my next tip, of course, is to be playful. Be playful all the way throughout this. Don't be aggressive. Don't be negative in any text that you send. Think about how you'd react if someone sent a message back to you. If you moan about the day or moan about the weather or how tired you are, that's just negative language. And my last tip for you and is to send photographs as well as just text. I don't mean dirty ones, half naked ones. There's a time and a place for that. But imagine how you feel if your boss or your mum found these messages. Send photographs about what you're up to. If you're in a wonderful, wonderful place, just say a message along the lines of, I was thinking about you here. I think you'd really appreciate this view or you'd enjoy this meal or I just wish you were here. What are your thoughts on those tips there, Claudia? Yeah, I love the fact that you brought up the emojis because I think that this is a great way to inject, you know, the tone into text messages that you can't, um, the tone that you have when you're talking on the phone, you can hear the laughter in somebody's voice, but just with a well-placed emoji, it changes the whole message. You know, for example, if you say, thanks for last night, period, or you write, thanks for last night, can't wait to see you again with a little kissy emoji. It's a totally different message. It's going to give the person um, that you went out with a, uh, also um, a different message about how you felt about the evening. And I think, you know, just placing one or two emojis and messages, for example, saying, I hope you like surprises, by the way, with a little winky face. I mean, that's flirty. That That's cute. It's it changes, uh, emojis can really up your texting game uh, quite easily. So I think those are wonderful tips. And also about the staying away from being negative because you don't want when somebody sees a message from you to go, oh boy, <laughs> not, you know, not another negative rant or another downer. So keep it positive, fun and flirty. Absolutely. You don't want to bring them down and make their day feel even worse <laughs> by sending them things. So they will associate you with the messages that you send. And that's true of any form of texting. You've got to remember that it sells for what you're doing. You're selling yourself. You've got to sell yourself in an upbeat, positive way and leave them wanting more. Now, Claudia, what do you think is next in terms of dating in general right now? We're going through some strange times and texting is always going to be in demand. But what do you think might be next? I think that people right now are really looking for genuine connections, taking their time instead of, you know, just kind of going through people looking for the perfect person. I think people want a deeper connection. So I think that texting and um, spending time getting to know people is going to be um, more and more a, a trend. How about you, well, James? I definitely agree with you. I think people are looking for something a bit more meaningful nowadays. So if you're using texting mm -hmm. for that purpose, it's going to help you build deeper, more meaningful connections. And that is what our jobs are as dating experts here. We want to help people have long-term, happy, successful relationships. 
And times are definitely changing. And I think they're changing for the best when it comes to dating. Because people are ready for something new. They've embraced video dating. Texting has always been there. But like you said, it did used to cost quite a lot of money to text. But now we get unlimited text on our phone. I've forgotten that, in fact. It's a very valid point. It's like the, like the internet used to cost money for dial-up. I remember those days. But in the same ways that we went through that and dating times have evolved since then, dating is evolving now too. And it's a wonderful time if you're looking to meet somebody on a more serious level. Just make sure that you do spend the time getting to know them and taking your time. And, and texting is a great way of doing that. It's a slow down way of really investing your time and making them feel special. So, Claudia, thank you so much for coming on to my show. You've shared so many valuable tips there. Can I just ask, if somebody wants to find out more about you, how do they find your website? Is Text Weapon a downloadable course? Is it a coaching program? What exactly is it and what is your website? Yes, they can come over to www.textweapon.com. And there I have um, a lot of different uh, resources, a ton of different blog articles. Um, got quite a few ebooks, and also have uh, the Texting Club, which is a three month um, web based membership with uh, something like 2,500 messages or something like that. So it's really just a creative text message idea bank. Wow. And then I also do uh, one to one coaching. So just um, contact me and uh, I would love to work with you. Fantastic. I'm sure that some of my listeners will be in touch right away. Texting is something, if you get it right, it can work wonders. If you get it wrong, you can kill a relationship stone dead. So Claudia's service is absolutely amazing. I can tell you now that if you want to know what to do, do invest in her text weapon course. Check out her texting club and definitely book a coaching call with her. Now, Claudia, thank you so much for coming and talking to me. You've shared so much and I wish you a wonderful day and hopefully I'll text you soon. <laughs> Thanks, James. This has been great. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to give you a free copy of my latest book, which you can download right now from my website, jamespriest.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you could share the love by taking a few seconds to write a positive review on the iTunes store right now. See you next time.